In this video, I will show that uh, the density function for the multivariate normal distribution or Gaussian distribution is normalized. Of course, it should be normalized, but uh, how can we prove that? Uh, here's the density function. x is a vector and 1 over square root of 2 pi to the power of n and the determinant of a matrix sigma and exponential 1 over 2 and vector x minus vector mu transpose and sigma inverse so this is an inverse matrix and uh, x minus mu that's it so x is a vector n dimensional vector from x1 to x2 to xn and mu is another vector uh, let's say mu mu1 mu2 and mu n and sigma is a matrix uh, let's say sigma 1 1 sigma 1 2 maybe i should put sigma squared yeah it should represent some kind of variance uh, maybe it's not variance it's covariance so just write sigma sigma 1 n sigma 2 1 sigma 2 2 and sigma 2 n and so on so this is a matrix and we assume that this is positive definite definite and also symmetric And of course, it's real matrix. So everything is uh, real, not imaginary or complex, just real numbers. So symmetric and positive definite matrix sigma. So since it's positive definite, we can invert it. Therefore, this is OK. And since it's positive definite, all its uh, eigenvalues are positive, strictly positive. So the determinant is the product of the eigenvalue. So the determinant is non-zero and positive. Therefore, we can take the square root of it. And so there's no problem with this expression. Now, what we want to show is that if we integrate this function over the entire uh, n-dimensional Euclidean space, this should be equal to 1. Before starting the calculation, uh, we want to simplify this function a little bit. Uh, so instead of x, we define y uh, equal to x minus mu. So if we change this, then the function uh, will be this. Uh, so ex ex except for the except for this constant term, uh, the function will be exponential of negative 1 over 2 y transpose sigma inverse n y so if we integrate this over the entire space uh, it's not dx it's dy now the Jacobian is just 1 and so what we want to prove is that this integral is equal to uh, the denominator of this so that is square root of 2 pi to the power of n and the determinant of sigma. Okay, so we want to prove this. So this is our goal. So how can we do this? First of all, sigma is symmetric and positive definite. So from the famous theorem from linear algebra, we can diagonalize this matrix by an orthogonal matrix. So U is an orthogonal matrix, S is the diagonal matrix of eigenvalues, and U transpose. Okay, so U, uh, okay. U is orthogonal. So that means U transpose U is the identity matrix. And S is 
the, the diagonal matrix of eigenvalues. Okay, so eigenvalues. Since we are assuming that sigma is positive definite, all the eigenvalues are strictly positive. And we, want, uh, we need the inverse of sigma, but uh, that's very easy. So inverse of sigma, if we have this expression, it can be expressed as u, the same u, this, the, this uh, orthogonal matrix of uh, the column vectors of which are the eigenvectors of sigma, u and s inverse, s is this s, okay, this s and u transpose. So this S inverse is actually very simple. So we have this diagonal matrix and S is also a diagonal matrix, the elements of which are one over S1, one over S2, and so on, one over Sn. And it's a diagonal matrix. Since we're assuming it, uh, sigma is positive definite, uh, each eigenvalue is strictly positive, so we can take the reciprocal of this. Okay, so there's no problem with this. Okay, so S is S1, S2, they are non-zero, so we can just invert it. And you can actually show that this is indeed the inverse by just multiplying them, right? So sigma inverse, sigma so sigma inverse, if this is that, uh, u s inverse, u transpose, and sigma is u s, u transpose. And so u transpose u is just identity matrix. So it's just identity. Uh, we don't need this. Okay. And so identity matrix times any matrix is just any matrix, uh, just that any matrix. And you can uh, easily check that this matrix, multi this matrix multiplied by this matrix is the identity matrix, right? So, so only the diagonal elements are there. So S1 times one over S1 is one and uh, s2 times 1 over s2 is 1 and so on so this is just identity and identity times u is just u but again this is orthogonal so either u transpose times u or u times u transpose this is just the identity matrix therefore this is indeed uh, so this is indeed the inverse of sigma. Next, using this expression of sigma inverse, let's consider the exponent of this function. Okay, so y transpose sigma inverse times y. So if we replace the sigma inverse by u, S inverse u transpose we get this okay this is equal to u transpose y transpose s inverse and u transpose y so if we set z equal to u transpose y we get z transpose s inverse and z Okay. But since S inverse is, so let's say Z is just Z1, Z2, Zn, okay? So, but S inverse is just a diagonal matrix, so this is something like this, Z1, Z2, Zn, and 1 over S1, 1 over S2, and so on, 1 over Sn. 0, 0, and z1, z2, and zn. So if you calculate this, this becomes uh, this. 
z1 squared over s1, z2 squared s2, and zn squared sn. Okay, so there's no cross terms like uh, z1 times z2 and so on. But in the original expression, there will be some cross terms like y1 times y2 or y n times y3 and so on. But if those cross terms are there, then we cannot easily calculate the integral, right? Because, because of the cross terms. But if there are no cross terms, we can split the integrals. Okay, so the uh, so exponential of one over two y transpose sigma inverse y. This has become exponential of this. So z one squared s over s one and so on z n squared s n. So this is just the product of exponentials. So this is equal to exponential of z, uh, it should be negative actually, negative and, uh, and we also need two in the denominator. So that is uh, s1 of uh, two, uh, it's not this, it's z1 s1 exponential of negative uh, z2 squared over 2s2 times and so on 2s okay so integration of this is easy because we can just split so so this integral so this is just a uh, Okay, just use this product symbol from i to n exponential of minus z i squared over two s i and so this becomes from negative infinity to positive infinity exponential of z one squared s one dz1 times an exponential of z2 squared over 2 s2 dz2 and so on But uh, as you know from uh, calculus, this integral, this integral is just a uh, square root of two pi and this uh, S1. Okay, so this is two pi S2, square root of two pi Sn. So just, uh, combine them together, square root of, so there are n terms here, so 2n, uh, 2 pi to the power of n, s1 times s2 times up to sn. So that's it. However, uh, if we calculate the uh, determinant of sigma, uh, but sigma is u s u transpose, uh, but the pro determinant of a product is the product of determinants, right? As you know from linear algebra. And the determinant of an orthogonal matrix is either positive one or negative one, because from here, the identity, if you take the determinant, this is one, uh, this is one, right? Determinant of the identity matrix is one. But this is equal to determinant of u transpose times u, but the determinant of a transpose is the same as 
the determinant of the original matrix. So determinant of u squared is equal to 1. Therefore, determinant of u is either uh, positive 1 or negative 1. But uh, so we have this determinant of u twice, so it's always 1. So this is this. But since S is the diagonal matrix of eigenvalues, this is uh, S1 times S2 times and so on up to Sn. So this part is equal to the determinant of sigma. Okay. Uh, so that should be it. Ah, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Since we have changed the variables here, we also... We, we should be also concerned about the Jacobian of this transformation, right? However, uh, the, since the determinant of u is 1, the Jacobian is just 1. So dz is equal to just 1 times dy. Okay, so this, this absolute value of the determinant, so it's 1. So this integral is indeed, uh, this integral, is indeed the same as uh, the original integral of y over y. Okay, the Jacobian is just one, so this is it. They are equal. This and this are equal. Thus, we have proved that this integral. exponential of negative 1 over 2 y transpose sigma inverse and y is equal to square root of 2 pi to the power of n and the determinant of sigma. So if we divide both sides by this then we can see that the density function of the multivariate normal distribution is normalized. And we are done.